The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. We have a very special guest, a good friend of mine. You guys have seen him here before. A uh, big welcome to my friend, Joe Buddy. Uh, what's going on, buddy? Hello, hello, hello. All good, my friend. Thank you for thanks having for, me. Oh, thanks for being back, dude. Like, uh, I know you've been really busy. Congratulations on y'all's win. I mean, you guys won f- number one on iHeartRadio's Spanish podcast. Bro. We did. We, we beat uh, the owl. The little owl. It's amazing. For learning speak other languages. Oh, Duolingo. Duolingo, yeah. You guys we that Duolingo. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the app on my phone. Oh, it's a good app. Yeah, it's really good. Like, I'm learning French. But we're better as a podcast, Duolingo. Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys did great. It's fantastic. So big congratulations to you guys for doing that. Um, we shot an episode last week uh, where the whole crew was here, and I had planned to say something about it, and it just slipped my mind. But uh, you're here, so, <laughs> uh, you know. Thanks Thank so you much. guys. Don't worry about it. Thank you guys. Um, um, we're gonna ha- we have a a pretty cool episode right now. Um, we're gonna talk about one of my heroes growing up. I-, I didn't know. I just liked him. I mean, I was a kid. You know, I didn't know any better. But uh, now I know. Uh, we're gonna talk about Superman. Oh! <laughs> I was a Superman fan when I was a kid. I yeah. was Spider Man. Yeah, see, I didn't, and then I grew up, and now it's Batman or see, I, I John grew, Constantine. And I grew up in El Paso. I was like, "What buildings?" <laughs> you know, <It's> like, <laughs> that, that has guy, always been that, a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy's powers are useless here. Yep, <laughs> yep. same here in Juarez. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, what is he? Where is he going to swing from? You know, that's what I. I don't like that guy. No, I like Spider Man too. I actually had a Spider Man mask and some. Or they also had sunglasses that were Spider Man oh, sunglasses, man, yes. right? That you could like right around Halloween, you could buy the the little. Yeah, costumes. and I had this, the Halloween suit that I hated because it had Spider Man on the Spider Man co- costume. I yeah. hated that they did that. You like, wanted the logo. You wanted the logo. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I also remember Casper the Ghost yeah. uh, costume. I loved it until I opened it and, had, and it had Casper the Ghost, and I'm like. This is ruining the illusion, They're you know? Like, who are you I'm six to? years old, and yeah. I know that this is ruining the illusion. That's crazy. You had a career in uh, marketing at that, at that oh, age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, the logo's all wrong. It's all wrong, <laughs> you know? But I agree with you. Like, I actually had the Superman suit, like the Halloween one, the plastic one. Yeah. Right? And it had the S on there. My name's Sam, so I identified with the S. Oh, like, God. Sam, Superman, you know? I was like, yeah. And there's a picture of me about four years old holding a stool up, you know? In my Superman costume. I mean, you everybody. Know? You know, and uh, my uh, little backstory real quick. My aunt and uncle had been in a terrible car accident. So my aunt ended up having to live with us. And my mom and dad had a big uh, common room. Well, it was what we call a plant room because my mom loved plants. And she had plants like a jungle growing uh-huh. inside there. So my aunt was confined to a hospital bed. And the hospital bed was in that room. And my mom would help her. You know, right? And her kids were in the accident as well, and they ended up going to school with us, and they ended up living with us for like two years. I was a little kid, so I I, I just remember dropping them off at school and picking them up after school. But they were my cousins; they all lived with us. And my aunt and I became real close because we were I was always seeing her yeah. at the house, and uh, I had my little Superman outfit, and she's a Armico, Armico. You know, like, show me, show me how yeah. strong you are. And I'm lifting the stool, and she took the photo. And I'll, I'll, I'll put that on my social media. Cool, one of these days, you know, But the Superman photo is out there somewhere. And, I mean, Superman know? is always everybody's first, uh, I think, uh, connection to superheroes. Yeah. I had my pajamas. I remember them. My Superman and Batman pajamas, they had that little cape on them. Yeah. And I loved them. I mean, you, you know, I didn't even realize, I didn't realize that Batman, what, how great a superhero Batman was till like, I was an adult. Yeah, the same yeah. thing happened. And I had a friend. I had a friend point out to me, and he goes, "You know the difference between Batman and everybody else, beside the fact that he doesn't have any superpowers, is that he's the only one who's human." Yeah, he says, and as a human, he doesn't kill, and he's like, "I'm not killing anybody," right? And he's got to rely on his ingenuity. To the detective to, beforehand to get everything done. Yeah, because he doesn't have superpowers. The superpowers is mine. And I went, whoa. 
I'm a Batman fan now. Yeah, that's right. that's what happens. That's, that's what happened to, to me everyone. Too. You start with yeah. somebody like Spider Man, Superman, The Flash. You grow up. It's Batman. It's Batman, and you start you start to understand. It's like this guy's superpower was his mind. Yeah, and money. And money, and money. Yeah, oh, money helped his mind. Yeah, it helped his mind. But I think he would have done it either way. Like, oh yeah, of course, ingenuity is. And I mean, money does not make you want to help people. That's right. I mean, he could have built like uh, so, a service that get that grabs things and and delivers them to your house, you know. Yeah. But no, he but chose to save it. people yeah. every you night. You could like kill every <laughs> single brick and mortar store out there if you have all the money in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a Jeff Bezos joke, but anyway, uh, let's talk about Superman. Um, there's a couple of cool facts here that a lot of people might not know. A lot of you fa super fans might know, but the very first version of Superman appeared in 1932 in the reign of Superman. He was a mix of Lex Luthor and Professor Xavier from X-Men from Marvel. Okay. He was actually bad. He was a villain. I did not know that. The very first Superman was a villain. Yeah. The character was a bald telepathic villain. He used his powers for racetrack winnings and stock manipulation. <laughs> he focused on world domination. By one one horse at a time? <laughs> what? That's going to take a long time. Stock market manipulation. 1932, you know, this was the... And so... I've been foiled by those kids at Reddit! <laughs> so Schuster and Siegel later I, don't, I guess they're the creators of the Superman character Schuster and Siegel later I think that was like the publishing like the guys that they decided to take the hyphen out of Superman and make him a hero okay so he went from villain to hero but the very first one was a villain all right that manipulated stocks you know he shorted all these hedge funds <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a villain. No, that's actually pretty good. Um, he wasn't always able to fly. Okay. So Superman's big power, right, was that he could jump really high, really far, really high. Like the Hulk. Yeah, that was his superpower, right? Um, but in the 1940s, he was given the power of flight because it was too hard to animate him jumping. They were like, how do we make him look like he's jumping? And just make him bent knees, and then he looks like he's taking a dump, you know? Um, I, okay, it's too hard. He flies now. And they say being lazy doesn't get anything <laughs> done. Doesn't get anything done. <laughs> look so, at this. You know what I thought was clever when um, The Incredibles came out? Uh, the, yeah. You know? And they go, no capes. <laughs> that, whole, that whole thing, like, no capes. And then everybody's getting caught in wind yeah. turbines and stuff. I went, Duh, why would you want a cape? <laughs> you know, it's like... Looks cool, man. <laughs> looks Sometimes cool. Sometimes <laughs> it's, it's worth it. Hey, I'm talking about no cape to the guy who wears capes. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's worth it, man. It's worth it. It's so worth like, it. Imagine the first guy who came up with a cape would be like, dude, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. I can, uh, you know, look like a bird or yeah. hide a sword under here. When I, where I grew up, the neighborhood I grew up in was very suburban middle class, but it was kind of ghetto at the same time. Like, there'd be fights all the time. Shoot, dude, we wouldn't even wear a jacket. Because <laughs> they can grab the jacket, pull it over your head, and start beating you. you and you'd be done for, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, so you're always like... Short hair? You're always like, wear a sweatshirt, dude, and that's it. You know, like, don't wear a jacket. They'll use a jacket against you, you know. So that was it. Capes, flying, 1940s. 1940s. Yeah. Superman actually stole the identity of a dead man. What? Yes, that's a weird fact about Superman. Clark Kent was given a social security number in the comics, so others would not suspect him of being Superman. The actual super social security number was 092096615. And he which, got it from a dead man? He got it from a dead body. It, and, and this is the thing. It actually belongs to an actual man who had passed away a year before. Oh, what? So, so, so they, the comic book was actually they, doing such a really fraud? They actually, they actually used a dead guy's social security number and assigned it to Superman. I'm sure somebody used that number. Like, maybe it'll work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know. And so, he did. Um, Giobara Balochis is the man whose social security was used. Relatives were confused, but ultimately it's an honor to have Superman use your social security number. Wow. 
that's I think that's the author's opinion, not necessarily the family's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, Superman was on the FBI's watch list in real in life? The comics. Yeah. Oh, in the comics. Yeah, Superman might be on the side of the U.S. government, but that does not mean he was not tracked by the FBI. That makes sense. In 1945, USA was working on an atom bomb. A comic strip at that time showed Superman visiting an atom smashing uh, cyclotron. Cyclotron, yeah. The FBI immediately investigated the editorial offices of DC, fearing a leak. The comic was ultimately brought to a swift conclusion. So, the oh, comic, like, the no, comic no, no, comes no, no, out. No, 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 we've seen Nazis <laughs> read about it. They're going to know about a yeah. random bomb. So, the Superman writers were the ones that got in trouble for, for writing <laughs> a comic. It's when art imitates life yeah. or life imitates art, right? So, the they actually had to investigate the comic, the DC comic. Uh, one of the facts that I read, and I don't have it written down, but... The creators of Superman actually sold the character to DC Comics for like $130 back uh, in 1931. $130 bucks was $2,500 bucks back then. That's pretty good. Now it's worth... Yeah, but but, who, but who, who made him worth that? Yeah, DC. DC. He wouldn't have been worth that if those guys had kept them. It's just like when, when people do like really nice art of you guys and you guys buy the art from them. The art see they're going to like stay stuck as just some a uh, uh, doodle. No, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Or, so so DC made him, but they they bought him for 130 bucks, which I thought was pretty cool. And another another quick fact is that <clears throat> sometimes DC universe characters cross over to Marvel universe uh stories. Uh-huh. Well, Superman's actually crossed over over 12 times or something in different different comics. I just remember one from my time. Mm-hmm. So Marvel so versus one, DC. Yeah, but but no, there's one where he's but when he crosses over, he's Clark Kent. Oh, okay. He's not Superman. He's Clark Kent. He's a reporter. Oh, he's reporting on he's that reporting universe. On, on that makes sense. On what's happening, you know, in that particular comic. So that was one of the, the I thought it was a cool fact. Uh-huh. But uh, fact number five. Are you ready? Uh huh. All right, dude. This one. This one. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Superman made a sex tape. What? Yes, Superman made a sex tape. Okay. Uh, Superman is a virtuous hero, but the Man of Steel has a dirty secret. In 1987's action comics, a villain called Sleaze used mind control convincing Superman to make a sex tape with Mr. Miracle's wife, Big Barda. You're making this up. I'm not making this up. The comic shows a porn director scolding Superman for not being passionate. <laughs> Ultimate Mr. Mir- Mr. Miracle intervenes, and the three decide to never speak about this incident. Okay, so we can't deny the 80s were the best fucking decade the, in the world. <laughs> the 80s were crazy, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, lots of cocaine, man. <laughs> they, they were like, dude, I don't know what it was about the 80s, but the 80s, you had like porkies. You had like... Uh, 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 cocaine Revenge, Revenge of the Nerds Right You had all these movies that All like, this Like the like, fashion The music It was yeah. just Everything So in was, 87 They're like You know what would be cool And this was in the comics If he gets tricked Into making a porno right, Let's you make know? a villain Let's make a let's make basically Controls you Into sexual harassment yeah. Well and you know he, Mr. Miracle's wife Big Barda So Mr. Miracle Was like a cuck You know Like he's Yeah watching. and did he know Did they get over it yeah, that's what he says. He says that... Did that he understand Superman was being controlled? He, he Apparently, it, um, it says that the director is scolding him for not being passionate. And Mr. Miracle goes, okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. And let's not talk about this anymore in the comic. Right? Wow. Okay. That's... <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know I'm going to Google that, you're gonna, that I, sex I know, scene. I know. I know. It, well, it's a comic. It's a... Oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to Google the comic? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, there's actually pictures of it. Uh, when I was researching it, there's actually pictures of the comic where he's like sitting, uh, he's like sitting on the bed all like sad, <laughs> big barda. You know, what I mean? get a fluffer have, over here. Have you seen that? Have you seen that that meme where it's the really hot girl and the, and the nerdy chubby guy? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh you know, it's like, that's exactly what it looks like. But um, <clears throat> this is our final fact, and um, this is, I mean. Everybody knows about the Superman curse. I don't really want to get into the Superman curse, but yeah. 
Um, there's a lot of anybody who's ever played Superman has anything to do with Superman. You Technically, just, only like two yeah. people. It's like there's a bunch of different things, but they're like su- su- circumstantial. Like, yeah, because like, we have three new Supermen that are are fine right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, but like Brando's kid. Marlon Brando was Lex Luthor, and his kid ended up killing someone, and then going, and you're just going like, eh, it's a little far stretch. Another guy overdosed, you know, you just, you're just going like, yeah, yeah I don't know. This, this sounds more like the Hollywood yeah. cor- 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 the yeah. curse than the Superman one. But this is a true story. Superman versus the KKK. Okay. All right. So in the 1940s, right, The Adventures of Superman was a radio sensation. And kids listen to this. And I have the guy's uh, um, name here. A young writer and activist named Stetson Kennedy infiltrates the KKK. Right. Obviously, he's white. He gets into the KKK. He learns all the secrets of the KKK. He learns their secret codes. and the Because the KKK at this time was in the 19, early 40s was just blown up. Yeah, it's like they're, they're an right. actual society. Was, of yeah, and they were getting political <coughs> power. And they were getting really strong. So this kid decides, okay, he's an activist. He goes undercover, becomes a KKK member, understands all of their plans, all their secrets, goes to the police. Police ignores him because obviously some of them are in the KKK. Of course. Right. So what does he do? He writes 16 episodes that go on the air. Superman versus the KKK. Okay. In the 1940s. It was a Superman show then. It was a Superman show. And he's combating these and he and he would he leaked a lot of their secret society like the actual stuff, the actual ones on that show. So now people were like, "What?" Like this became mainstream. They're going like, "What?" And they started making fun of the KKK for all the ridiculousness and all the different things and all their... Because they were ideas. actually trying to play like yeah. secrets inside like bullshit. Like, Dude, and also like <coughs> if you're like in the KKK and now your kid who loves Superman hates yeah. the KKK. Yeah. Well, he did 16 episodes to fight the KKK. And let me, um, let me see. He looked at uh, the superhero post-World War II era. So this had to be after 1945. Um that the membership skyrocketed and so the clan became powerful and intimidating so he did 16 um he says struggling to make use of the findings kennedy approached the writers of the superman radio serial it was perfect timing with the war over and nazis no longer a threat the producers were looking for a new villain for superman to fight the kkk was a great fit for the role in a 16 episode series titled uh, clan of fiery crosses the writers pitted the man of steel against the men in white hoods as the storyline progressed the shows exposed many of the kkk's most guarded secrets by revealing everything from code words to rituals the program completely stripped the clan of its mystique <laughs> within two weeks of the broadcast the kkk recruitment was down to zero now maybe for those two weeks but i know that they didn't they kept it. Up, but they, but it actually made a big like, big impact. dent yeah. yeah so um our buddy here uh what's his name again Stet, uh stetson like the hat kennedy it's a hero 16 16 episodes. years old 16 oh, episodes. episodes 16 episodes he is my and, hero yeah. yeah 16 episodes the man of steel versus the kkk amazing that's the, right? what a way <laughs> that's a, what a win right there take <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for this episode of the shit podcast hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for being here uh let's do this again uh sometime thank you guys once more for all the support please uh follow my buddy here you probably already do uh, how can people find you you can find me find me as el ba diablo and remember to subscribe and click the little icons yeah. on everything. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, the bell. Put the little bell so you know when my next episode's up. Because uh, especially the English ones, uh, we're, we're, we're a very small group uh, compared to the Spanish ones. But, uh, hey, thank you guys for listening. We'll get there. You know? Oh, we'll, they will. We'll you up. will, Sam. Yeah. And I, have a lot of pe- I have a lot, of, a lot of the fans. A lot of you guys are like, hey, thanks. This really helps me with my English. And I'm going like, man, I can't believe I get this many views in, in Latin America in English. So I appreciate you guys and all my U.S. friends and stuff, too. But I know it's mostly the 
Latin American market. Oh, yeah. Los amamos. Bueno, los queremos mucho. Gracias. And that's it for this episode of The Shit. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Chao.